It's one of the most profound mysteries in the natural world. An amazing transcontinental odyssey. The migration each year of millions of monarch butterflies from Canada, across America, to Mexico. We've got a butterfly that's originating in Toronto, or it's originating in Detroit, Michigan. It's coming down from St. Paul, maybe even Winnipeg, and it's moving south. And somehow it finds its way to Mexico. Could you do that? Starting from a tiny caterpillar, blossoming into a beautiful butterfly, these delicate creatures will fly thousands of miles in a feat of endurance and navigation unlike anything else in nature. They've never taken a long flight in their lives and they're on the way to an area that they've never seen before. Somehow they're recognizing landmarks or following streams or following the sun or following something. They're on their way to a remote area high in the Mexican mountains and they get there every year at exactly the same time. The butterflies have dazzled humans for millennia. It's a beautiful little creature, and on top of that, it migrates 2,000 miles. And this just staggers the mind. I think the monarch butterfly is one of the most magnificent animals in the world. And it, it's unique in terms of the entire animal kingdom. There's nothing like it. Next on NOVA, the incredible journey of the butterflies. Exxon Mobil, taking on the world's toughest energy challenges and by David H. Koch. And... Discovering new knowledge. HHMI. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. On a late August morning, just north of Lake Huron in Canada, a miracle of nature is about to unfold. This tiny caterpillar is destined to become a monarch butterfly. One of the most amazing transformations in the animal world, the caterpillar will outgrow and shed its skin four times.
fifth time, the caterpillar disappears. It's transformed into a chrysalis, a delicate case within which a completely new being takes form. After about 10 days in the chrysalis, the new creature is complete. All traces of the caterpillar are gone. And in its place is a butterfly with four delicate wings. the newly developed monarch butterfly must wait a few hours for its wings to harden. And then, finally, it can fly. This particular generation of monarch butterflies is special. Every year, about a hundred million of them begin an astonishing migration. Coming from southern Canada and the northeastern United States, each butterfly, starting on its own, flies about 2,000 miles, arriving two months later in Mexico. Their trip is part of a carefully timed cycle that began three generations back, when a group of monarchs left Mexico at the end of the winter. They flew as far north as the Gulf states, mated, and died. The second generation flew to the northern United States. There, they too mated and died, living only about a month. Their offspring, 
the third generation, completed the last leg of the journey to Canada, also surviving only about a month. But the fourth generation will live almost nine months, and they'll fly all the way back to Mexico in one epic trip. It's an amazing natural cycle that so far eludes explanation. The mystery starts at the very beginning of the trip because no one knows exactly what triggers the exodus from Canada. Well, when the monarchs leave Canada, they have a 2,000 mile trek ahead of them, at least. They're freshly hatched butterflies. They've never taken a long flight in their lives, and they're on the way to an area that they've never seen before. Somehow they're recognizing landmarks or following streams or, or following the sun or following something. We just don't know exactly how they do it. It's really an incredible journey. A monarch's wingspan is just under four inches. And they weigh less than one-fifth of an ounce. So how they survive their marathon migration is another mystery. They only fly when conditions are perfect. If it's too cold, they get sluggish and can't flap their wings. If it's too hot, they stop flying so they don't get overheated. They must also stop often for nectar and water. But every time they land, there can be enemies lurking. 